Yeah, well, I got more of the plowing done the other day. And film any of it because I was running late and wanted to get these two pieces done before uh, dark that night because they had rain in the forecast and yeah, we got rain. I mean, for as dry as it is, probably won't take much to dry that out. I mean, there's going to be a couple wet spots, but it's going to soak in fast and dry off. Hopefully by this weekend, I can get this done. I think you got a little chance of rain yet tomorrow, but later in the week and the weekend, it's supposed to be pretty much good all weekend. Problem is, I got to finish, fix this before I can pick plow that last piece. I mean, like, probably could be plowing that right now. I don't think the amount of rain we got would hurt that, but I got to replace a couple plow points. This one here got bent. It don't make much difference. And this one I broke. I don't know what's going on here. These this ain't tripping like it's supposed to. But it's the norm for breaking them. So I got two new the last points I got here, so I hope I don't break another one. If I do break another one, I can put that bent one back on if I have to. But uh the only problem with these is the bolts are backwards left-handed threaded bolts so that's the biggest biggest issue of putting these on and yeah, let me get some of these bolts out yeah the bolts are just got two points clipped off and the holes match up to it so they sit down there flush which the heads of the bolts will actually wear as with the points and you got one that's just slightly bigger that goes in that front hole. And uh, I'll be able to do this one handed or not. And just slip in there and just line them up. Get them squared up here. Of course, they'll turn and pull in as you tighten them up. And then they'll pull in down there. Yeah, let me see if I can set this up and be able to do this. Where's my wrench at? And of course they gotta have two different size nuts. Back three taking 11 sixteenths. Front one takes the three quarter. And these bolts are different than normal bolts because these are turning the regular threaded way. I don't think this right direction makes much difference. I used to say I had left threaded bolts. As you pull them through the ground, rubbing in the bottom here, might loosen them up. So I used to have, I've never, I've had them come loose, but never lost them. And I don't know, well, where is my, I did have three quarter socket around here. I'm good at that, laying my tools down somewhere. I'm getting where the hell I laid them. Oh, there it is. And that's the easy part about getting uh, points on, is putting them on. Hard part, 
I'm surprised them both actually came loose. Usually they don't come loose that easy. And sometimes you gotta torch them off, which I'm glad I don't because I was gonna fix this coulter again. I had to cut out that weld and I ran out of gas and oxygen, both. So I gotta go get more of that. I did lose and I don't know where it is in that field over there. I lost that disc. I don't know how them four bolts came out, but the whole disc was gone. And that's one reason why I wanted to fix that one. One missing wasn't bad. It will bunch up stuff and eventually feed over, but when this one was missing, nothing would pass through here and kept plugging up. So pretty much need that disc to help cut that trash to size it so it rolls over. But I got, uh, had a spare one around here, another one that stems broke out on. In fact, if I wanted to, I could take that piece out of there, weld it into that other one, and switch the other disc over and have that ready to go. But I'm not going to worry about it at this moment. I'm just going to get this other point on. And then I still don't know if I'm going to get out to plow yet tonight. But, but that's what I'm working on here right now. Get this other one on and I'll come up with something. Yeah, I did get the hot water tank changed the other day. I came out and put a new one in. Uh, you know, it was leaking somewhere in them seams. There's hot water we run in here. I mean, we run up between 165, 170 degree water. And I guess it's all plastic tank, all glued together. Glues just don't hold up. And uh, it eventually cracked, so they replaced it for free. Uh, it was probably going to be close. I don't know if they would have replaced it anyhow. And it might have been, but uh, he pulled... I don't know why the hell they do this. They just pulled the lower element out. And maybe they almost had to, because there's so much scale build up in there. I don't know if it would drain much out of that bottom one. But they pulled the bottom element out to drain the tank. And that element just pretzeled, twisted up, yanked it in pieces to get it out. So I don't know, it might have been burnt out as it was. I didn't seem to be lacking hot water. The only thing is, I don't know whether I should call them back about it. One thing I've noticed here, the hottest water I'm getting in there now is 153 degree water. And the thermostat on there only goes up to 150 where this one goes up to 170 so I don't know if I should call them about it and have them come out which I probably should do or just say the hell with it and yank this thermostat off put it on that other tank and be done I mean, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference that bottom element heats up to 170 as your water rises keep the top at 170 bottom 150 it'll have enough capacity, I guess. But, uh, yeah, that's the only problem I got right now, which ain't a problem this time of year. It's in the winter time when it's 10 degrees out. By the time the water runs through the pipeline, it gets cooled off fast. And it's got to stay above 120 degree temperature when it discharges. It gets colder than that, and the milk solids can reform and redeposit on the surfaces in the pipeline so that's why you got to have the, such hot water to maintain that temperature well we got that done but i have something else here i've seen that i wonder if i should ask them about maybe somebody can tell me so let me get up here you know, i've talked about here in some other videos about problems i've had with stray voltage and that i had it back in 2018 and determined those determiners all coming through the utility here and I've got an isolator switch on that pole over there where I'm disconnected from the neutral. And the neutral is the bottom wire and the top wire is your hot wire. Well, what I noticed here the other day and my question is, should anything be touching that neutral wire other than the connection to the transformer? Because I noticed this here. And like I say, it does depend what angle you look. But this guide wire here, and like I say, I don't know if this is going to show up. You see anything? I say that guide wire is touching that neutral wire. 
and I don't know if it's supposed to, if there's any problem with that. The other thing I noticed is that to the left is the anchor point for the one guide wire and it's connected to the ground. Same way with that one up there, the other guide wire, and it's connected to the ground. So my question is, why? I mean, I understand a little bit about electricity. I mean, your neutral and your grounds are pretty much connected together and it shouldn't make a difference. It's in your main panels, neutrals and grounds go on the same basically bus bars in there. It's if, and I don't know all the situations, but I do know if it's a sub panel, like the old barn down there, there's wires coming out of the main panel there, underground to that panel, so that's a sub panel, there's four wires. And the neutrals and the grounds are separated in that panel down there and connected up, to connect up here. So I know there's instances where they should be separated, but for the most part, they're connected. And that's my question. Should I be, now, since I'm isolated from the neutral and it's not indicating any straight voltage around there, this should not make any difference. But would that cause stray voltage? I'm telling you, I didn't bring my meter with me here. I was playing around here the other day with it. If I stick my meter, ground it into the ground, and touch that cable down there, I'm getting a half volt. And 0.25 volts is what affects the cow. So I don't know if this is feeding something off the line into the ground, and I'm picking it up in grounds in the barn there, or something through the barn, if I still got straight voltage. I mean, uh, I want to know, is that a concern? When I talked to a guy at Penn State there last year about stray voltage, one of the things that could cause stray voltage is loose connections and fuse panels, corroded connections. To me, that up there would almost be a loose connection. If they're just touching, in the wind they could bounce back and forth, and that would be a loose connection. And like I said, I don't think they should be touching. And I'd kind of like to get a perspective or an answer from somebody that knows this a little more because I know it's going to happen. They're going to deny anything or they back talk me on it. Like they did as a straight voltage. They never even looked at that guy's report. I know they would be probably concerned about a lawsuit, which pretty much is a waste of time anyhow from what I've read. If anybody that's had lost production of straight voltage, by the time it's all done, the lawyers get everything. It's hard to prove that this would be the reason, and that's what I'm not concerned All I want is a fix so the cows are milking like they should be milked. And like I said, I don't understand now. That pole up there has a guide wire. It's not connected to a ground. Both these are, that makes no sense, other than that it is another ground. I mean, I could understand if it wasn't touching that neutral up there because they ground the transformer with this bare wire going down the pole and it goes underneath and then it's coiled on the bottom. So it's planted in the ground. And like I said, I can understand wanting another ground or whatever and these cables would be grounds, but I don't understand the point. And I can't believe they don't understand or didn't know that was touching. I and mean, this video is gonna to get too long as it is, longer than I wanna make. I mean, if, if somebody wants to know that story, I'll tell it again, just let me know in the comments. I'll tell the whole thing because this, these two wires on was added in 18 different. That was, was changed in 2018 in order to put the isolator switch on. So like I say, before that, nothing was touching that though and I had stray voltage. So like I say, I don't know. If anybody knows a little more about electricity, like I, say, I know enough to do what I need to do. And I don't know all the ins and outs, how one thing affects another, like, too much. But, like I said, I just don't understand what situations, you know, what, what would be code required. And like I say, if somebody has an answer that I could 
relay. I mean, I talked to my uncle, he knows a little bit about electricity. And his suggestion was to talk to the REA. And that's probably is the best concern, bring it up to an, one of the engineers down there and have uh, at least have them explain to me why that would be acceptable. So, I don't know, that's just one of the concerns I have here. But I guess I'm gonna get cows fed. I mean, another job that goes on day to day, get the cows fed and maybe I can go strike out the field out back here plowing. I mean, I didn't do nothing yesterday. I was pissed off again, so. Still pissed off. I mean, I say it's, yeah, it's just a waste. Talked to some of the guys at the feed mill today and they have the same feelings I do. I mean, I, dairy in this area is dead pretty much anyhow. And say, it was smart to get out of it. And maybe I would. If I could just prove that I was right here on something, get production back to where it should be, prove some of my points. I mean, there is something here screwing around that we're missing. Because I know I can do a 65, 70 pound tank average, which is not spectacular in today's day and age, but I know I can do it. I used to do it year round. And now I can't even get nowhere near it. And I just don't understand it. So, yeah, I'm gonna end this here, I guess. Thanks for watching. And like I say, if you're new to the channel, subscribe, doesn't hurt anything. You, know, you can set the notifications so you don't get all the notifications. You know, help out by subscribing or click on the bell so you get the notifications. It's, I try to make these things interesting. I hope a lot of people are enjoying them. So I'll be continuing it for a while at least. So thanks for watching and we'll catch up with you later.